demonstration, I have created an app called Basic Stuff. Uh, I log in, admin, change me, and then go to the Flow Orchestrator. Hit a new flow and call it a mover because we want to move messages from one queue to another. Then you are in the flow editor and at the left you have flow component libraries. The base library is called stream interface. That's the interface to the SwiftMQ router or broker where this flows uh, runs. And as you see, you have various uh, components uh, here structured in folders. And the easiest way to uh, access a component or to find a component is just to, t to s uh, search it. So look for Q input and drag it onto the panel and we want uh, move uh, messages from a queue called test queue. Uh, we can use a wiretap, that means the uh, messages uh, can stay in the queue, a selector and we can uh, create it automatically. Next is to use a queue output. Uh, to move the messages to and connect both. We want to move to test queue too. And we have the same auto create and we can optionally disable persistence of the message. Yeah, and that's it. Flow is ready. Oh, sorry. Uh, that was a command. Uh, so if you double click, you can easily add a command here. This is test Q2 and delete it. Okay, let's activate it. Here is the node where we activate the flow. It's an embedded router uh, called Flow Director. Click Deploy and then Activate. And the flow is running. You can now uh, connect to the flow and view it live. So as you see here, uh, you see the number here at the connection is zero, and this is a, a, a throughput uh, a reset interval. So every, for def per default, every 10 minutes, uh, this counter is reset to zero. So we need another flow to send messages to the source queue. Um, let's call it message producer. Again in the flow editor, now um, look for a queue output um, to send messages to. That is the source queue of the other flow, it's test queue. And now we need a, uh, to send it in intervals, so we need a timer component. Uh, we have one called interval timer and fire the timer every 10 seconds. So the timer fires a kind of message, this is called a timer, and this has to be converted into a, a normal GMS message. And so we use a timer to message component which has an input of timer and an output of an empty GMS message. So that's a message without body. Uh, we want also to set a property. 
in the message uh, and we use a component called property setter no copy so we don't need to copy the message but uh, a better idea is to, to set a sequence number which auto increments uh, so we use property setter sequence we start with one and set it in property count and that's it so this is the flow uh, timer uh, timer to message I set a sequence number and feed it to a queue output to test queue. And now deploy and activate. And let's view it. Okay, we see one message is sent. And if we click on the connection, we can see the messages live. As you see here, there's a property con correctly set to two. And let's look at the other flow that moves the messages. As you see here, it arrives and uh, will be sent to test Q2. That's actually all. Uh, we can connect, we simply can connect components to, uh, to this flow. Say I want at the same time uh, sent to a topic, the same message sent to the topic uh, called test topic. You can do that, uh, use the topic output for that. And then go back and update. So update is a redeploy and activate. So and as we see here, uh, yeah, we see two, and that means uh, one left, one right. Uh, so uh, it's actually better to use another component to see the numbers uh, split for the left and the right component. Uh, this is quite easy. Uh, I use a component called message sequencer, which actually creates branches in a flow. So you branch the flow in two parts left part is 2q, right part is 2topic, and as you see you create connectors there and just connect them. Okay, it's a pretty air, so, and then just uh, update. And view it again. And you will see you have left and right the correct numbers at the connections. Okay, to undeploy the flows, you can use the set operations by selecting the rows and columns and then just uh, hit undeploy. Thanks for watching.